Hi, my name is Eric Kelso, and you're listening to the Sega Lounge. Welcome to the Sega Lounge, a podcast dedicated to our love for all things Sega, be it the games, the music, or the community. I'm KC. In each episode, I'll be talking to different guests and sharing their projects and their passion for Sega. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 156 of the Sega Lounge. And what a treat of an episode this will be. But let me start by thanking everyone who took part in our giveaway last week. We gave away two codes for Virtua Fighter V Ultimate Showdown with the legendary pack DLC included, and we had hundreds of entries. Unfortunately, only two people could win, and let me give a big shout out to Joshua Ford from the UK, who won the European code, and to Vibav Akaria? Sorry, from the USA, who won the North American code. Congratulations to you both, and I hope you enjoy the game. Also, a massive thank you to Danny Russell of Sega of America for hooking us up with these codes. Everyone, stay tuned for more giveaways in the future. Anyway, are you a fan of Virtua Fighter? A fan of Shenmue? In that case, have I got a treat for you this week. Let's get to know this week's guest. This week, it's my pleasure and my honor to welcome Eric Kelso to the show. Eric is an American-born voice actor who's been living in Japan for 35 years and is known by Sega fans for being the voice of Jackie Bryant in the Virtua Fighter series and for being the original voice of Fukusan, Guizang and Ran from Shenmue. I had a great time talking to Eric about his work in the video games industry, his life in Japan, Shenmue and much more, so stick around for that and for a special quiz about the many voices of Eric Kelso. I hope you enjoy. Hello Eric, welcome to the Sega Lounge. How's it going? Great, thank you David. Uh, <laughs> really a pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, uh, an honor to have you on the show and talk about a little bit about your career, your characters, uh, but let, let's just start from the beginning, though. I'd like to get to know you a little bit better and get our listeners to to know more about you as well. Uh, so you're obviously a, a very talented and prolific voice actor. How did it all start for you? How did you get into the voice acting business? Um, by chance, actually. Um, I was living in Japan. I, I graduated university in California uh, with a major in film. And I decided, like two weeks after I graduated, I left America, not planning to be back for 10 years. I wanted to make documentary subjects about different things and cultures in different countries. But I never really traveled, so I thought I needed to see the world. So I planned to travel the world for 10 years, make some connections, find some interesting things, and then go back and get the grants and, and make the documentaries. Mm -hmm. Japan was the first place I came. I only planned to be here for two years. It's uh, 35 now. And um, I was uh, drinking at a local bar. I was just working as an English teacher, high school and college, and a little bit of NHK, um, radio and TV, which is kind of like the BBC of Japan. And uh, drinking at my local pub, and a buddy of mine who was a voice actor was in there. And so he actually called his agent and had a job pop up uh, for a TV commercial. But he was already booked to do some educational work, uh, just like A, Apple, B, banana kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me if I could cover for him because it was like in the next day or two. And luckily I, I could. I had some free time and I wasn't sure if I could do, physically do it. And he, but he said, no, it's okay. You can figure it out. <laughs> <clears throat> so I did. And um, the client liked me and he gave me the contract. It was two hours a month. And the studio liked me enough, and they started giving me some work. 
And I just figured it out that, you know, you can make demo tapes. In those days, it was like a cassette tape. And um, there are agents and things. So I slowly started um, getting more work in the voice work. And uh, I, as the voice work picked up, I started cutting some of my teaching. So I was lucky that I was able to kind of ease into it. Because when you're working freelance, you know, there's no guarantee. And you still have to have your, your regular job. So luckily, I was able to arrange it just right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's interesting. So you, you didn't plan for this at all? This wasn't a plan. No, thing. <laughs> no, at all. I mean, I, I had a degree in film. And so I mm -hmm. understood about film and some television. And, and I, I knew a bit about media and that kind of thing. But I never wanted to be in front of the mic or in front of the camera. I okay. always wanted to be directing or writing or something. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I I can relate to that as well. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, um, and obviously, you're here because of your work in video games as well. Were you a video game fan or a gamer before this whole voiceover thing started, or not really that much? Um, no, not at all. Because I I think I was kind of too old for video games in a way, because. You know, when I was in high school, you know, Pong came out, you know, <laughs> the very first video game. And then there was like uh, Space Invaders and Asteroids. So it wasn't quite the role playing, you know, fighting games or it, it was still in its very infant stages. And um, I would, I grew up kind of in the mountains and on the beach and there weren't game arcades or anything. The only video games I saw were at the local round table pizza. And sometimes if we went there to get some pizza, I would ask my, you know, I'd get a quarter and, and play a game. But it never quite hooked me. I'm not a really competitive person. So I don't really care if I win or I lose. Um, so I wasn't really into it as much. Like I got to get to the next level kind of feeling, which I yeah. wish I had, but I, I just don't. And so... Um, You know, I think I have less of a, I have a more stress-free life because I don't, but I, <laughs> I, I'm missing out on a lot of really fun, competitive things that just don't really interest me as much. Yeah, yeah. I, I relate to that. I'm really not that much of a competitive person as well. So mm -hmm. I, I usually, um, I, I don't care if I win or lose. I, I, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I care a little bit, right? I don't, uh, n I'd n rather win. Yeah, no one likes losing, so yeah. But sure. um, I'd rather play like uh, cooperative games. It's yeah, and also I just right, and I've never been a game player. I don't like card games or you know puzzles or I've never really been a interested games in, in any kind of game. And yeah, yeah, games in general, I've never really um, enjoyed playing as much. Mm -hmm. um, so it just didn't really have that appeal to me. Yeah, yeah, excellent. But okay. I have an amazing appreciation for games, especially video games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing this job for, you know, 25, 30 years, um, 30 plus. But, uh, you know, I've gotten to see kind of both sides, not actually playing the game myself, but like how the games are made and doing the voices and then talking to so many people like you um, who are so involved in the gaming community that I've really learned to love it and appreciate it. So biggest respect for games. I just never really was the person to hold the controller and push the buttons. Yeah. And you've seen a kind of the, the, the evolution of the industry as well and the quality of games as well. So uh, being yeah, in, involved sure. with this for so long, right? Yeah, because I've been doing it since 1997 um, for voicing video games. Mm -hmm. um, And I always, you know, I remember seeing people, you know, play Pac-Man and things like that. Um, so I have seen it change, but it's especially, you know, in the last, you know, 25 years that I've been doing it, um, a lot of changes. Really yeah, interesting. Yeah, definitely. Do you remember your first ever video game that you voiced for? I think looking at my IMDB page, which knows more about me than I do, <laughs> um, I think it was 1997 um, for Soul Edge. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, and I played it... Siegfried. Okay, 1996, I think, right? Was I'm it looking 96? at your IMDb. Yes. Not okay, to make I, you feel older, looking... but no, no, no. That's great. <laughs> um, but um, I'm looking. Actually, I I printed out my uh, Wikipedia page, so they're okay. a little bit different. I'll <laughs> I'll change that to 96. Thank you. <laughs> so so it's been a while. It's been a while. Let's let's put it like that. Yeah. So you've you've voiced many many voice actors. So yeah, just looking at your IMDb page. You can you can get a, a a very comprehensive look at your career and all the different characters you've voiced, all the different games you've been a, a part of. So that's that's really really amazing. And yeah, and you could see from the inside a little bit of this evolution. Even with uh, did did you or are, do you get to notice the difference in the quality of the voiceovers as well? Uh, from your perspective, is there is there any difference? Any any evolution? Well, I think the the more people do their job, the better they get, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so I I think yeah I think the characters are, are a little bit more developed now, which is also nice for actors to have a character with some meat on them, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit more of a storyline, and especially when the role playing games came along, um, like Shenmue and things like that. It was a lot more fun for us than just hua, hua, kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is a lot of what we do um, for the fighting games. But um, when we actually felt like we were actors, like voice actors, you know, um, I think we got better as well because, mm -hmm. we, you know, we wanted to meet the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But definitely the, the quality of the scripts as well, right? So the... I, do you yeah, feel like yeah, for uh, sure. is there more thought put into the quality of the lines of the writing than before as well? Because I, I feel like well, like that's a, a reality, at least in some cases. Yeah, I think I think and like like I was saying, when you have more of the role playing game, and now it's almost like movies. I mean, if you look at things like yeah. Yakuza and Judgment and and things mm -hmm. and and Shane Move kind of started all that. Um, they're movies, mm -hmm. you know. And um, the early, you know, when I first started doing like the early Tech Can and Virtual Fighter, uh, there weren't as many lines and there wasn't quite as much character development. Um, so I think the technology, uh, there wasn't the technology to really do it at that time. Um, but, um, you know, people like Yu Suzuki and that were just pioneers in the field um, really broke the ground that. That that helped to, you know, give wings to those stories. Mm -hmm. um, it would be impossible to do twenty five years ago, but um, now with the technology to make it look more real, it also needs to sound more real. And yeah. so I think that's been really nice for voice actors. There was also limited storage space in discs or cartridges, right. whatever people used right, right. in the beginning, right? So. You didn't have much space to, to uh, you know, if you wanted the game to look great, you had to be concerned about that. Maybe voice was, uh, you know, at the, the bottom of the list for storage space that, that they wanted to use, right? They wanted to save that for other things that were more, maybe more important at the time. But now it's, I think, equally as important for that immersive experience to have characters that are well voiced that are well written as well i think yeah i totally agree and um you know constantly we were told make it shorter make it shorter you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they, I, i'm like look it's only a four line sentence you know i, I, I can say it really fast if you want and they're like yeah we got to say it really fast we don't have space so <laughs> okay makes sense yeah okay uh you also so you you, you mentioned briefly that you you Taught actually, you taught English. Yeah, uh, and are you still um, in that in the teaching world? Do you still do that from time to time, or are you just dedicated? Yeah, to I've been I've been teaching since uh, nineteen eighty six, and mm -hmm. um, but in my early days, I was teaching high school and uh, women's college and a university and and a prep school and things like that. But as the voice work picked up. And I decided to stay here and, and really focus on that. Um, I started cutting those jobs. And the only thing I have right now is I still teach for NHK. 
um, which is the National Broadcasting Company of Japan, mm-hmm. um, at their culture center. I have just two classes a week, so not much. And um, I'm on their children's educational program. It's kind of like the Sesame Street of Japan. Mm -hmm. It's called Ego de Asobo with Orton. And Ego de Asobo means um, playing with English. Okay. And with Orton, Orton is like the The kind of like the big bird. Yeah, Yeah, and he's a whale. And so he has, he's a kind of an animation whale with Orton Mm -hmm. Town on his back. And that's where the whole, every, the stories take place in Orton Town, which is on the back of Orton, this giant oh. whale. And so, and it's really good. It's teaching kids English and it's really fun and it's really well made. And so I've been doing that for gosh, over five years now. And uh, I play the voice, I play Orton. So I'm Orton the whale. Okay. And he has a, a very kind of a cartoony voice and he says, hi, I'm Orton. Today, <laughs> we're going to learn about fish or something. So he has a very kind of a high fun voice, and uh, it's a great show. So that's always fun. That's on every day. Excellent. I I, I was going to mention this later, but uh, that was a very good example of the range of your voice because uh, we I was talking to someone the other day. Um, some of the voices that you you uh, did are very deep, right? So like maybe mm-hmm. Guizong and and Ren Guizong, are yeah. yeah they're they're deep Ren. voices. Yeah, but then you have like Orton, who's like a, a really cartoonish. Orton. Yeah. yeah. So and Jackie that's amazing. Is a, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so Jackie, Jackie is a, kind of a high voice as well. Yeah, we were talking about Jackie as well because uh, I, I think, I don't know who it was this week that was saying, um, is, is it really Eric? Because it's very high pitched uh, in it. Yeah. So that's the range. But that's Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> I think because a lot of times you never heard Jackie really speak. And mm-hmm. so you just hear him say like, come on, you know, and things yeah. like that. It's like, it's like you're moving in slow motion, you know, so he's, <laughs> he's got a high voice like this. And so when I did the uh, Sega um, retrospective, the retrospectives, yes, um, they asked me to do it in Jackie's voice. And so I had to make it kind of high because Jackie's always talking like this, you know, <laughs> and uh, Suzuki-san, when I first did that, um, gosh, in 2001, Virtual Fighter 4, um, they basically directed me to make him very young and very brash and cocky mm-hmm. and with a very confident attitude and, you know, kind of a jerk in a way, you know, just, but an, a, a good guy, but just very arrogant and cocky, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but young and very young. And so I gave them several voices and then, uh, the one that they liked was kind of the, yeah, come on, that kind of high voice. <laughs> and so that's, that's what stuck with Jackie. Yeah. And it, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Okay. Um, so back to the whole uh, v- uh, voice acting thing. So I don't know, wh- which would you say people, wh- which character that you voiced, uh, Sega or non-Sega? video game or not, apart from maybe Orton, which is probably very well known in Japan. Uh, but Kids know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So which character would you say people most associate you with? Which is like the most iconic? From your perspective, I at would, least. I would have to say Ren from Shenmue 2. Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of people, you know, know me as Jackie. Um but he doesn't really have a lot of lines. A lot of mm-hmm. people know me as uh, Paul Phoenix from Tekken. Um, but I would say the Shinmu fans are the hardest core. Yeah. You know, I mean, because of them, a game that had been dead for 15 years came back to life just because of them, basically. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and in that whole time, I've been in contact with the Shenmue fans of the game. And um, they've included me on things. They've, they've asked my opinion or interviewed me. And, and they, came, they come to Japan to do the, the sojourn of, of Ryo kind of thing. Yeah. And they contact me and we go out for dinner and drinks. And, and so they've they really formed kind of a family and a very loyal following. And so they have made me appreciate that game even more. 
And uh, I think Ren is the character of all the characters of all the games I've done who has had the most lines and the most kind of uh, character development. I'm not sure how far Ren can really develop, but uh, he's, <laughs> he's a fairly two-dimensional dude. But um, I like him a lot. I like mm-hmm. Ren a lot. I think, you know, he's he seems to be a really cocky, kind of just money-hungry, selfish guy. But actually, you know, he helps Rio out a lot, and he's, they become good friends. So he, he's been the most fun to do, at least, for sure. Yeah. It's like the, the anti-hero, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, for type sure. Of guy. <laughs> and he's kind of the he's kind of the comic relief of the show as well, of yeah. the game. You know, I, I get all the good lines. So that's fun. <laughs> Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about Shenmue. How how did you get the gig at the time? Um what what happened? Just like any gig, um you get a call, you know, from an agent and uh ask if you want to do a game and you say, "Yeah, sure." And then they said, "This one's kind of a big one. It has a lot of lines." I said, "That sounds great." And um, that was it. And then they say, are you available during these times? And I said, yes or no. And we we tried to create a schedule that's good for everybody. And then I went to a Sega studio in Otori in Tokyo and walked into the big room. And, uh, you know, everybody was there and they handed me this big, thick script that I wasn't even prepared for. <laughs> And uh, met uh, Suzuki-san and all his crew. And it was nice. I like, Sega seemed a little bit different than other Japanese offices I'd been in because it had more of like an Apple or Google kind of creative feel to it. At least the creative department did. Um, you know, there, you'd see toys on people's desks and plants and photos and stuff, which you don't really see in Japan on desks so much. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, People were just T-shirts and jeans and very friendly. Yeah. And uh, they said, okay, this is this. these are your guys. You know, the first I did Shenmue 1, and I did yeah. Fukusan and Guizan. And they give you pictures or show you video. Then Not much video was even made at that time. A lot of it was just off the script. So we didn't even know really what was happening in the scene. Um, and then they just kind of give you a, a brief outline of the character and, and what their role is in the game and their background and ask you to do a few different voices. And then they say, okay, do the second one again, but a little bit higher or a little bit lower or something. And then we kind of just, you know, zero in on the voice that they like for the character. And they say, okay, that's the guy. And then you just start recording. Okay. So did you, uh, I don't know when exactly in the development process you were brought in, but did you get to listen to the the Japanese voice or? No, no, which was nope. interesting. I, th- I thought that would be kind of nice. I, I, I don't know what the Japanese, I mean, I've heard, I've heard uh, Ren in Japanese. I haven't heard Fukusan or Guizan. Um, but yeah, they didn't play us the Japanese character. I think they just wanted us to kind of see what we had on our own. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And how was the recording process? I remember I talked to Corey Marshall a, a few years ago, um, mm-hmm. and he said there wasn't really that much, um, you know, contact between the voice actors during the recording process, if I remember correctly. So you were, you, you did your things separately. Is that correct? Yeah. A lot of it's separate if it doesn't actually have to be a conversation. Okay. Uh, we do it separately. It just it, it's more efficient that way since it's all recorded anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, it it saves money of just you know having no no sense to pay somebody for being in the studio if they're not working. And yeah. so uh, I did record when I was with uh, when I was doing Ren in Shenmue Two. I was doing a lot of days with Corey because mm-hmm. Ren and Corey have a lot of back and forth. And, you know, we were handcuffed together for a lot of it. Yeah. And so we, uh, and we even put our like hands out. I was standing on the left. Uh, I put my right <laughs> hand out. He was standing on the right of me and he put his left hand out. It was kind of like almost touching. And we would, we'd go through our scenes with our arm out like that. So we could like feel that kind of stress of having to hold your arm up for two hours, you know, so it, hopefully that would come out in the performance. And, uh, 
Corey and I got to be good friends. We, you know, we eat and drink together and hang out. He didn't really know anybody in town. And uh, I kind of took him under my wing a little bit. I kind of showed him around. And uh, it was funny because I felt like I was Ren and he was real, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I was like, ah, yeah, let's go over here. Let's have a drink over here. It's like, ah, don't try that. You won't like it, you know, or something. <laughs> and so I was kind of like showing him around and he was kind of more serious and kind of like real, you know? And so we kind of became our characters in a way. And that, that helped our performance, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. And he was really young at the time as well, right? So, um, Yeah, just a kid. Yeah. Real fresh. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so that's a great guy. I love I love sense. Corey. He's always been very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um you you obviously did Shenmu one and two. Was Shenmu the reason you got the Virtua Fighter gig, by the way? Or did you have to go I through the know. whole I, process? Oh, it's it's they have to they go through agents. They never contact us directly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think I did Shenmu in two thousand. And then Virtua Fighter was just a few months later in 2001. Um, and so I, that was also Suzuki-san. Yeah. So maybe he, he liked me in Shenmue and saw I had something that might match uh, the characters in, uh, or the, the, would match Jackie in mm -hmm. Virtua Fighter 4. And so maybe he requested me, I guess. Yeah. That that's that's why what I thought yeah could happen mm -hmm. because if someone likes you maybe they'll call you back for something else for another project yeah yeah hope yeah yeah hope they do. <laughs> you hope <laughs> <laughs> excellent so you've mentioned uh, the Shenmue uh, fan community which is obviously awesome Shenmue is is a really big part of uh, everyone's lives of, of the fans myself included um, it was it was. A, a big part of our lives at the time, and it, I think it, it, it really left a, a big impression, uh, at least for me, at that age, it was a, a very, very important piece of uh, culture, of, of media that uh, really, um, I think, influenced even uh, some of my early adult years, to be honest. Hmm. That's how, how big this thing is for, for the hmm. fans. So you mentioned being in contact with them, and yes, you have collaborated with with many fan projects, etc. Uh, what is it about Shenmue, from your perspective, that um, it makes it so special to so many people? Do you have the 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 answer to this ever important question? <laughs> hmm. Well, what is it about Shenmue? <laughs> from from what I've gathered, from what other people say about it and my own impression as well, is that it's, it, well, it, you know, technically it was the first real like in-world kind of game that you could play. You could walk around and check things out and open doors and, you know, get food and talk to people. And it was, it was just so immersive into a, a whole new world. And I think that had never really happened before. And that's part of Suzuki-san's brilliance of just creating completely new ways of playing. So I think that that was really um, addictive in a way. And um, it's almost a spiritual engagement, you know? I mean, it has a real wonderful Asian, kind of Japanese and Chinese kind of magic to it that I think a lot of people in the West have never experienced before, which is very appealing to me. I, I mean, I live in Japan, so that's always appealed to me. And um, it the the graphics, uh, the, everything. I think it was just mm -hmm. very intelligent and very thought out. And it wasn't just like a kid's game that you play. It was an experience, you know, that mm -hmm. that even adults can be, you know, fascinated by. And I think it takes some some dedication. It's not the kind of game that you just you know stick a quarter in and and play for one round and then, you know, go play another game. Yeah. You know, it's the kind of thing where you, if you're going to sit down and play, you're going to be there for hours. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the first game to really give that experience. Yeah. 
that's a great answer, actually. Uh, and I know this, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, so it's easy to say yes now looking back. But did you get at the time when you first got involved with, with the first game that this was going to be something special? Uh, you already no. mentioned the, the size of the script, but other than that, was there anything? No. <laughs> Well, the size of the script was fun and interesting and, um, you know, good good paycheck as well. That's always nice for, <laughs> for freelancers. <clears throat> But um, I could tell that it was different. I could tell that I'd, I'd never spoken so much in a video game before. But we didn't even see a lot of the graphics. Like I said, a lot of it was just off the script. We're mm -hmm. just next line, next line, next line, next line. And so that's why sometimes if you're playing... Uh, games like that and the guy says you know come on something but actually in the scene he should say come on yeah you know <laughs> we we don't really see the situation it just says come on and mm -hmm. sometimes they'll put an exclamation point so we think we have to shout it because it has an exclamation point you know so And it's, it's originally Japanese translated to English by non-native speakers a lot of times. And so a lot of the punctuation or different things like that, we don't really know what it looks like or the situation. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the other line is. We only have our lines written on our script. And so we don't often know what to do exactly. Mm -hmm. But... Um, With Shenmue, it, I knew it was different, but I didn't know how popular it would be. And after we did the first game, we're like, hey, that was a fun gig. I really had a good time playing that. I mean, voicing that. But um, I don't know any voice actors who really play video games. So we just, okay, job done, next kind of thing. Um, but when Shenmue 2 came around, we were excited because we really enjoyed doing Shenmue 1. And um, Shenmue 2, you know, the, the adventure continues kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And so that was kind of even more exciting. And for me, I got Ren, who was really fun. So, and I got to see Corey again, you know. So that was fun. And Suzuki-san and everybody. So that was even more exciting the second time. Excellent, yeah. Have things changed a little bit in, in that regard, in the, the regard that you don't get many uh, you know, directions or indication of what the, the real feeling is behind that line and, and things like that? Or are they mainly the same? Uh, it depends. depends. You know, it depends on who's directing. It depends on if the script has have a, had a native check. Um, sometimes the scripts have just been translated by a Japanese per person and they're, they're kind of funky. You know, it's not really natural spoken English. Um, and when that happens, uh, we, we will say, this is kind of stilted. It doesn't flow exactly right. You know, can I use a contraction here? Or, or can I say this a little differently? Um, or, you know, you really can't use this swear word. This is actually pretty rude. <laughs> you know? um, and so a lot of times it's not a native speaker who's, who's done the final check on it. So we try to help with the scripts as much as we can. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of times if there's a, a, a native speaker who is doing the directing, um, it goes much smoother. They can give us more kind of, um, you know, direction. And so it, uh, it works a bit better that way. Um, if you remember the movie Lost in Translation. Yeah. Where uh, Bill Murray who's my hero, um, <laughs> Bill Murray is doing that TV commercial and the Japanese director is trying to direct him. And he's saying, okay, be this way, be that way. And the directions were so strange and, and like contrary that Bill Murray couldn't figure out what was going on. And that was part of the lost in translation, I think. But um, yeah, sometimes you get directors and you don't really know what they want. You're, you're not sure if they know what they want. And they'll say like, um, you know, you're very angry, um, but you're a, a really nice guy or something. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm angry. Well, you got to kind of choose one or the other, you know? <laughs> and 
you know, if, if, I, if I could have my face, then I could kind of maybe give you more depth in, you know, various ways, but it's just a voice, you know, and, mm-hmm. or they'll say like the background, he likes chocolate or something. <laughs> and I'm like, is that really important in my voice, you know? So a lot of times the Japanese thinking and the Western thinking don't really, it's kind of lost in translation, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, you know, everybody's doing their best. And so we all try to make sure. it work. Yeah, that, that reminds me of the, the character profiles in Shenmue. They were really detailed. We, we, you, get to, you get to know uh, things about the, 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 even the non-playable characters, characters that maybe you interacted with once or twice during the game right. for a brief moment. And they had like a full bio profile about the, the characters. Right. And things that for, for us in the West are not that important, like um, blood type, uh, right, right. Th- things like that are really important for, you know, to understand maybe what a person is like for Japanese people, right? Yeah, uh, to, it, it, get- I think it can be. And, um, and also, I think they wanted to make it just really so in depth and even the yeah. minor characters had bios so i think that a lot of the fans really liked that yeah yeah for sure it, yeah. it was it, it contributed to to the, the immersiveness of the experience as well mm-hmm. there were real people with real lives yeah. and real routines yeah. and stuff yeah for sure okay excellent so you uh, something that i forgot to mention that i, I read a, an interview you you did a, a few years ago and you said you are not really um, so obviously Japanese is not your first language. Mm-hmm. So you are say that you don't you can't read or write very well in Japanese, right? So you yeah, you've never I've, I've never Japanese. studied Japanese. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I can speak Japanese well enough to you know carry on a conversation and 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 get by and and live a productive life and everything, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never really liked studying. I, I okay. love learning, but I don't really like studying. And so I would rather, I just, when I got here, I thought, I'm just going to try to see. Well, I, I only planned to be here two years, right? At the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really worth my time to spend a lot of time studying. I was more in, in, interested in just learning about the culture, working, saving some money, and getting on to the next country. And so. After two years, I had you know picked up some Japanese, and I was kind of getting by okay, just on learning like a baby learns. And um, then when I stayed longer, I just had already kind of decided not to study. And I was doing well. I was being successful in my work and my my social life and my love life and everything. And so. Uh, it was kind of interesting just not to study and just to see how I learn naturally. Um, and I have found that reading and writing for me are not that important here. Because if I want to read a newspaper or something like that, I'd pick up an English newspaper. But, um, you know, even menus have pictures on them. And if it's a kind of restaurant, that I know, I know what kind of food I like. Mm-hmm. You know, if I go to a sushi, a sushi shop, sushi, I know what kind of sushi I like. So I just order what I like. I don't need a menu, you know? Yeah. And um, if there is anything like official from the government or anything I really, you know, from my bank or something like that, that I have to actually read, um, you know, I, I've, I've always had Japanese girlfriends. And I, <laughs> you know, and so they help me and, you know, I help them with their English and they help me with my Japanese. So it works, it works fine. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Very good. Okay, Eric, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, okay. I have a surprise for you. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. So let's take a quick break. <laughs> okay. This week, the Sega Lounge is sponsored by the Sega Lounge. From now until the 20th of June, get 15% off all lounge merch from our store using the promo code TSL7. That's 
TSL7 for 15% off all the Sega Lounge merch from our store. Head over to thesegalounge.com slash store and use the code at checkout. Welcome back, Eric. Welcome back to the Sega Lounge. I, I said I had a surprise. So mm -hmm. do you know what it is? No, because it's no a idea. surprise. <laughs> yeah. A so, new car. Uh, a new car. <laughs> You get a car. Everyone gets a car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so every time someone comes on the show, a guest, uh, I like to play a little game with them. Okay. And it's called the Sega Lounge Challenge. Now that you know our guests, it's time to put them to the test. It's the moment we've waited for and the moment they dread. Welcome to your doom. I mean... Welcome to the Sega Lounge Challenge. <laughs> what is the Sega Lounge Challenge, you ask? It can be anything I want. And this time I thought, well, uh, Eric is a, a very prolific voice actor. So how well do you think he knows the characters he voices? Mm -hmm. And so I have a little quiz here. Uh, okay. All we have ten questions here, multiple choice questions about characters you voice, Sega characters. So we'll keep it uh, just uh, related we'll to Sega. Sega. Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll have some Jackie, anyway. some Fukusan, some Ran, some Guizang, so hmm. things like that. Okay. Um, so I don't know how many out of ten do you think you can get? Ten. Ten. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not so, competitive, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's just let's, try. let's let's just give it a try. Question number one. Ready? Mm, yeah. Okay. Which of the following is not a Jackie Bryant quote from the Virtua Fighter series? Okay. So mm -hmm. which one is not a quote for, for from Jackie? Mm -hmm. A. I'll give it a hundred percent. B. You know what you're getting yourself into? Mm -hmm. Or C, want to fight again? You're way out of your league. B is not. So you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I think B is, is, not. Not, the, is not a Jackie quote. Are you sure? Yes. Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> and you're correct. Yes. Good job. <laughs> B is Vanessa Lewis, so not Jackie. Ah, okay. Vanessa Lewis in Virtual she Fighter does that 5. Valet, Valet Tundo style or something, the Brazilian yeah. style. Valtudo. <laughs> Valtudo, that's it. <laughs> okay, so question number two. Let's go Shenmue. Mm. Okay. In the Shenmue series, so th this is not really Ren, but more Ren adjacent. <laughs> in the Shenmue series... Ren is the leader of the Heavens gang. Right. A well-known associate of the Heavens is a little boy called Option A. Or do you don't need an option? You, no, you were, you I were don't about know. To say I something. can't remember his name. Okay, I know the little kid okay. in the, the t-shirt. Yeah, on okay. the docks. <laughs> yeah, so option A, Wong. Yeah. Option B, Cool Z. Option C, Yi Dong. I'm butchering all the names here, apart from Cool Z. So Wong, Cool Z, or Yi Dong? Yi Dong. So Yi Dong is Y I and D O N G. I don't know. That just sounded like a strange one, so I'm going to go with that. <clears throat> so Yi Dong? Yeah. Option C? Option Final C. Final answer. Option C. Yeah. So cool Z is not is not the correct answer. Cool Z is part of the heavens, yes, but not okay. not a little boy. Um, Edong is part of the heavens, but not a little boy either. It's Wong. Not little boy. Actually. Okay. It's Wong. I was Wong. Wong. Yeah, you were Wong. Give you the Wong answer. <laughs> the Wong answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Question three. Okay. In in Shenmu. What is Fukusan's full name? So Masayuki Fukuhara. 
So no need for options? Sure. Are you sure that's in here? In my list it's of options? It's Masayuki Fukuhara. If you want to give me the options, that's the... Go ahead. No point. You're Maybe correct. I, I missed it a little yes. bit. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, Fukusan well or Fukuchan. You know, a yeah. lot of people call him Fukuchan if they know Japanese. Because Fukusan yeah. would be a it's nickname. too formal. Fukuhara, Fukuhara-san. Or you uh-huh. could sh- cut, shut it down to Fukusan, which is still a nickname. But Fukuchan is uh, sometimes we usually use for girls. Yeah. Uh, for small girls or something kind of cute. But because, you know, we would never say like Ryo-chan or Ren-chan because they're too manly. But <laughs> um, Fukusan is kind of a, a sweetheart, you know. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes we even call him, you know, Fukuchan. Which is okay. It's not disrespectful. It just it just has a little more love. Yeah, yeah like something cute. Yeah. Okay. Very good. That's an, that's that was brilliant. So good. Back Thank to you. Jackie. Two for three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back to Jackie. Number four. What is Jackie Bryant's fighting style called? Jeet Kune Do. Bruce Lee style. I mean. That's correct. Of course. Well Thank done. You. <laughs> Thank you. I love Bruce Lee. Yeah, it, it is Bruce Lee's style. Very good. Well done. Excellent. Uh, good thing I didn't, I didn't include Valtudo here. Otherwise, uh, you would say that that's Vanessa's style. I knew that was Vanessa's. Yeah. 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 That was too obvious. Okay. Very good. So three for four. Good job. Good mm-hmm. job. Number five. Back to Shenmue. In the first Shenmue game... Guizang helps his father to teach Ryo Hazuki a martial arts move before Ryo travels to Hong Kong. What's the name of that move? It's the last move that Ryo learns before leaving to Hong Kong. Okay, yeah, give me the options. They're on okay. the docks, and, and he says, do you want to yeah. fight or do you want to learn, you, you learn how to fight? <laughs> you know, when somebody is giving you something for free, you should take it. <laughs> yeah okay what is it give me the options so option A the tornado kick mm-hmm. option B the swallow flip option mm-hmm. C shadow step B swallow flip any particular reason why I just re- I could see them standing on the docks and uh, and I'm teaching him to fight and I'm telling him to just shut up and listen to me. And um, I remember something about swallow. Okay. So the swallow flip is your answer. That's my answer. Mm. And you're correct. Yes. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Okay. Keeping on with Shenmue. Mm-hmm. Number six, in Shenmue 2, Ren has a hideout in Kowloon. Where in the city is the hideout located? Is it in A, the Stand Quarter, B, the, the Thousand White Quarter, or C, Dragon Street? What was it again? Where is the hideout? So is it hideout. in... Stand quarter, uh, thousand stand? white stand stand. Okay. So one of the quarters. So these are all real locations in in right in Kowloon. Yeah, I've the been game. there, and I I'm guessing I I've never been there, but I'm guessing these are actually the names, the real names of the streets mm-hmm. uh, in in there. So there's the stand quarter, the mm-hmm. thousand white quarter, and then there's Dragon Street as option C. In the game, uh, Ryo enters the the, the gate. I have no CD, idea, but I'm going to say the second. Really close to the entrance. B because I'm going to say B because it sounds kind of cool. The, the thousand white quarter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually option C. The Dragon Street. Mm. Yes, it's Dragon Street. It's Dragon uh, Street. Just sounded too like. Cool. <laughs> I thought it had yeah. to be made up. <laughs> so when when Ryo enters the the gates to the city, it's you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, right next to the entrance, right okay. close to the entrance. Okay. Cool. Good job. Either way. So four out of six. Good job so far. We've got four more to go. 
Number okay. seven. What's the name of the woman Fukusan has a crush on in the first Shenmue? Option A, Nozomi Harazaki. Option B, Akemi Sato. Option C, Mai Sawano. Well, I don't think it's Nozomi because she's kind of she likes real, right? Um, Would be hopeless, Akemi. right? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's Akemi B. Akemi, Akemi hmm. Sato. B, you say? Yeah. Could be Akemi. Could be. Could be Mai. It's not Nozomi, no. Right, right. I think I remember hearing the name Akemi. So. It is Akemi. Well done. Okay. Akemi. <laughs> a host. I think I remember at a local saying, bar. I like Akemi or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Very good. Back to Jackie. In a way. Up. Uh, so question eight. Jackie and Akira appear together in the racing game Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. Mm -hmm. Jackie is the driver, and Akira his passenger. What's the name of the car that Jackie drives? Is it A, the Blue Thunder, B, the Yellow Flame, or C, the Red Lightning? Well, his nickname is the Blue Flash, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go with the blue thing you said. What was it, the first one? Blue Thunder? Uh, I have to go. Th well, I know uh, Jackie's racing nickname is the Blue Flash, right? Mm -hmm. So, so blue, I'm gonna blue go thunder, with Thunder, Yellow Flame, Red Lightning. I'm gonna go with A. Blue Thunder. Mm. Could be. It's not Yellow Flame. <laughs> it's not <Okay>. Yellow Flame. <laughs> it's not. Blue Thunder either. It's Red Lightning. <laughs> okay. Red I was Lightning. Going with the red thing. car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it, it, and yeah, it makes sense. Didn't see it that would game. make sense. But if uh -huh. you think about it, uh, Flash, Lightning, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Eh, the, that's why, another why they went with red. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe too much blue. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Number nine. Almost over. So when trying to set an appointment, with Master Chen in Shenmue 1, Ryo needs to call warehouse number 8 and give Guizan part of a password. If Guizan says, Father's Heaven, Ryo must say Nine Dragons. If Guizan says, Mother's Earth, what does Ryo have to respond? So, Nine Dragons, uh, so Father's Heaven, Nine Dragons. Mother's Earth, is it A, Comrades, B, family, or C, companions. So what does what is the last thing that uh, Guizan says so, again? Guizan says, Father's heaven. Rio says, nine mm -hmm. dragons. Right. Guizan says, Mother's earth. Mm -hmm. And Rio has to say either comrades, family, or companions. Comrades, family, or companions. Mother's Earth. family, family. Why? I just I remember that telephone conversation, and I remember what I said, but I don't remember exactly what Rio said. <laughs> but somehow, family seems familiar. I don't know why. Maybe just mm -hmm. family is familiar. But yeah, it, it, yeah, it makes sense. Mother, family, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. So family. Option B. Yeah, I'll go with that. I can't, I don't remember, so I'll just go with that. <laughs> okay. The correct answer is not family. It's comrades. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Last question, Eric. Ready? Yes. Yes. This is very, very difficult, this last one. Okay. <sighs> should, should I even... Do this. I don't know. This is so difficult. Which? Well, the rest have been so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following is not a Jackie Bryant quote from the Virtual Fighter series? 
Okay. Option A, there's no way you can stop me. Mm -hmm. Option B, I'm faster than lightning. Mm. Option C, you want to play? Come on, let's play. What was A again? Uh, there's no way you can stop me. I'm saying C is not. So you want to play? Come on, let's play. Is not, Jackie. Is not. So if if you say it, this is not Jackie, who is this by? I don't know. Any I guess? only played Jackie. <laughs> Any guess? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sarah. Maybe my sister. Maybe Sarah. Correct. It's, it's Sarah's. Yes, you want to play? Oh, right Come on. on, let's play. Good job. Well done. You yeah. did pretty good. Well done, yeah. Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. You do know your character, so good job. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for, for taking part in our little Yeah, actually, uh, that was, that was fun. Chris. <laughs> A fun game. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so um, we're we're wrapping up, but uh, before we we go, just wanted to ask you a, a couple more questions. Uh, first of sure. all, you've been you've been living in Japan for so long now. Uh, you only plan to stay for two years. What is it about Japan yeah. that that appeals to you? That makes you feel at home there? <clears throat> a lot of things. Um, first of all, I love living in a foreign country mm -hmm. because. You know, people in their time off want to travel to another country and learn things and experience uh, just new things in their life. But I get to do that every day. And so I learn something new every day. It's very humbling. It's very uh, challenging. Um, it really lets you know who you are in many ways. Um, it teaches you patience. So you learn something every day just being in a foreign country. Uh, Japan in particular, I, I, I love that it's so peaceful and it's, it's quiet and it's safe and the food is amazing. Um, and uh, personally, I like my job, you know. If I didn't do the voice acting, I probably would not be here. I would have just stayed another two years and saved up money And then went off and continued on my uh, my filmmaking career. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was here, you know, two years. I started doing uh, voice acting after that. I uh, I had friends. I had a girlfriend. I I had an apartment. And if I left, I would be, you know, continuing my plan which, you know, sticking to my plan, it's always important to stick to a plan. But um, I was happy, you know, I was, I was happy with my new life. And I finally felt like, you know, after three or four years, I kind of paid my dues and I kind of deserved to be taken more seriously here. And um, I took myself more seriously. And so I could either change my life or change my plan. And uh, my life was doing really, really good. So I thought I could easily change my plan. So I decided to, you know, stay a little bit longer and a little bit longer and then a little bit longer. And then it just became home. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I left um, California. I left America when I was 23. And I'm 58 now. So, you know, I've, I've lived here much longer than I lived in America. I don't really remember America anymore. It, it my life in America seems like an old movie that I saw once, and the main character was a guy who looked a lot like me when I was young, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> um, but it doesn't seem real, mm -hmm. and um, I have no really interest in America anymore. I mean, my parents live there. I, I I miss my parents. I like to see them, but aside from that, I really have no interest in America. And um, Japan accepted me as a member of its family and its home, you know? And I've met some amazing people here and seen some amazing things. And, uh, you know, there are some things that I could complain about as well, but it doesn't really do any good to complain. Um, yeah. And also, I'm, I'm the guest here. You know, I can't expect them to change for me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been wonderful. And um, 
I'm, uh, I'm engaged. I have a fiance and, and, and I'm very happy about that. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, I love doing the voice acting. I love living in Japan. I love it when people who are fans of the games I'm in, I love it when they come to Japan and contact me and we go out for a drink and a bite and I can introduce them to some Japanese food or, you know, show them around a bit. And I'm very proud of my home. So I, I love to show people and I love to see that, you know, that glint in their eye when they just go, wow, this is amazing. This is so interesting. And uh, Japan is one of those countries that you have to go to once in your life, at least, um, because it's so unique and um, and it really is a, kind of a magical experience. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and luckily, luckily enough, I, I can call it home. Have you uh, traveled all over Japan? Um, or most of Japan, or maybe some parts. I've traveled to all of the different islands. I've been to Hokkaido mm -hmm. and and Honshu and Kyushu and Shikoku and Okinawa, and um, especially when I first came, and I was hanging out with like Japanese people more, and a, a group of people were friends, and you know, a couple times a year they'd go to hot springs or or something. And a good buddy of mine from university, actually, he's uh, he came a year after me. And he's been living in Hokkaido now, and he's a doctor, a PhD, and teaching at universities and things. And so I go up to Hokkaido and see him sometimes in the winter when it's all snowy and beautiful and you know snowboarding or snow festival, or go in the summer when it's nice and dry to escape the humidity in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, and Okinawa has some nice beaches, and but there's yeah you know, there's something for everybody in Japan. It's a big long archipelago, and so. You know, the north is cool and the bottom is hot and there's something to do for everybody. Excellent. You're making me want to go. Yeah. I just <laughs> need to should. convince my wife to get on a plane. And, and <laughs> well, maybe, look maybe me up some, when you get here. Some sort of medication will have to be involved in there. But okay. Yes. Right. You said before that your wife doesn't like to fly. So <laughs> no, that's, that's rough. at all. <laughs> I'll have to come up with a plan <laughs> to kid kidnap her or something. Kidnap her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, very good. Okay, so uh, uh, you, you already mentioned, and we talked about it, the, the, the Shenmue community. You were uh, recently involved with um, a good friend of ours, uh, James Brown's, James Brown's um, Shenmue mm -hmm. World Project. You were gracious yeah. enough to sign some, some postcards. Um, how important is it to you to, to still be involved? And obviously, and we we're going to talk about that anyway, so you've... Uh, been involved in that Shenmue 3 mod because unfortunately um, you didn't come back for for Shenmue 3. Uh, right. I'm not sure if you if you if you feel comfortable talking about that. Oh yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, totally fine. So uh, what happened? No one got in touch. Yeah, just no one got in touch. Uh, they decided they wanted to do everything in LA, which is understandable, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. uh, so. You know, and, and I wasn't angry or, or hurt or anything. I was disappointed because I wanted to do it. But, um, you know, I mean, even with Virtua Fighter, I came in at Virtua Fighter 4, you know. Yeah. And, uh, diff you know, different games like that. Sometimes I'm in a couple of episodes, a couple of seasons or, or games, and then I'm, I'm replaced. Sometimes I replace other people. And that's just the nature of the beast. That just happens. I understand the business. So <clears throat> I was disappointed. Um, because it seemed like a lot of the Shenmue players and fans of the game really liked my characters voiced by me. And so I kind of assumed that I would be, but they just didn't contact me and didn't contact me. And then finally I realized, oh, okay, they're already recording this. So like I said, not angry or, or felt like I was treated poorly in any way, um, mm -hmm. but I was disappointed because I wanted to do it. And yeah. it was really nice when James and, and the Shenmue Dojo and all those people there um, decided to make the mods because um, I could do it for Ren. Took you know a long time to do, uh, just here in, in my home studio. And then I did a few for Fukusan and a few for Guizan. So I was glad to get all my boys back, and uh, and we all did it for free. Everybody worked their asses off, and just it was a lot of time and a lot of work. And, uh, but it was a labor of love, you know? I mean, that's how much people love Shenmue and are willing to dedicate to help 
other people who also love Shenmue. And they didn't make a single penny on that. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was good. I was really proud to be a part of the project. They asked me to be in the very first episode, which was very flattering. I, I really felt great about that. And it was a nice, like a 10-page interview. And um, I didn't mind signing. I think I signed 800 uh, photos. <laughs> and um, I didn't mind that at all. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's wonderful to be part of a family in that way, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a family of of people who just love the Shenmue, and that's it, you know. And it, it's it's a very simple kind of focused love, and everybody helps each other, and mm -hmm. it's really nice. I'm I'll I'll do anything for that family. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. That's really nice to hear, and it's a great project, by the way. So both are so Shenmue World is amazing, yeah, amazing, beautiful, beautiful magazine, really, really beautiful. Yeah, magazine. and big, thick. It's got over a hundred pages, and it's just beautiful paper stock, and the printing, and the colors, and the design. They and just great did content such an as well. Job on that, and great yeah. content. Yeah, great content. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to put in the next versions because it's just yeah. seems like it has everything in the first one. <laughs> <laughs> And and the mod is amazing as well. And I didn't know you guys did it for free, so so that's that's even yeah, everybody, more amazing. Everybody did it for free. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, very good, very good. It's and great. it's, it's can... great too because just recording in my own studio here at home, and um, they were able to put the voices in and edit it and everything. It sounds so smooth. Um, mm -hmm. And I I really enjoyed doing it because I I was Ren again, you know, because he's my buddy. <laughs> You know, like and and Guizan and Fukusan, I was I could meet my friends again, you know, because when I'm doing the voices, I don't feel like I'm doing the voice of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're speaking, and I could hang out with them. I almost feel like a split personality or something that they're just kind of coming out of me, and and I'm like hanging out with them. So it's it was so fun to do. Yeah. Do you feel like that for for most of your characters, like it, they're they're a part of you and you're hanging out with them, or just to some special ones? I feel like that with every one, especially if it's a recurring one, because then hey, you're back, kind of feeling. Yeah. But um, especially with Shinmu characters, because they had more character development, they had more lines, so I feel that they're more fleshed out, that they're more actual people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, if I, you know, if I was doing Jackie voices again or anybody, um, definitely I, I, well, I did Jackie, right. For the, for the, um, the retrospective uh, video, the retrospective. And that was fun Yeah, because I could kind of get excited like Jackie does again and saying, <laughs> you know, they came back with virtual fighter four and this is what they were doing, you know? So it was excited, exciting to like hang out with Jackie. Mm-hmm. And did you uh, record anything new for this new game that just came out, Ultimate uh, Ultimate Showdown? Do you record any new lines, or were they just nothing the ones new? From... They've they've been using the same original lines uh, for most of the games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From from five then, right? Five and final final showdown, maybe. Um. I yeah. I guess. I think so. From the beginning, I haven't done a lot of Jackie lines, so I think they keep yeah. they recorded a lot the first couple times, so oh, okay. they kind of just keep using those. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So I think it's very important for people to also know that you've uh, written a book, right? Would you, would you like to yeah. tell us a little bit about that book? It's great. Yeah, it's just it's just fun. I did it about two years ago, I think, maybe three. And uh, it's called Ericisms. It's just, <laughs> it's only like, what is it? Like 45 pages. It's just a small book. Um, and I just self-published on Amazon. Uh, it's really cheap, and it's just uh, it's called Ericisms, and it, the full title is Ericisms: Thoughts on Life That Spill Out of My Mouth from Time to Time. <laughs> and I used to say things, just philosophical things or observations about life, especially when drinking with friends, or and people would say, "Oh, you should write that down." And so I started writing them down on napkins or something. And I, about three years ago, I was cleaning out a drawer, and I found, you know over a hundred little pieces of paper and things with all these little, you know, stupid little bits of wit and wisdom. And um, I thought, well, what, what am I going to do with all these? I saved them, so I should do something. And so I decided 
to get like the one the 100 best ones. And I put them in a book. And after each one, there's also a Japanese translation. Yeah. So I was able to use that in my classes. And um, a lot of uh, Japanese people have really seemed to like it. It's a bit philosophical. Um, it, uh, the first uh, third, three chapters, the first is uh, Sun, which is kind of lighthearted and comical, kind of humorous ones. The second part is Wind, which is the wind of change and how different you know, changes in philosophy and, and new things that you notice in life. And the third one is Rain, which is, um, you know, it's dark, but it's essential water for life kind of thing. And mm-hmm. so, you know, a little talking about more about pain or death or loss or something like that. Um, but it's all very lighthearted, nothing really heavy. It's good toilet read. You know, it doesn't have a story <laughs> to it. You can just pick it up and put it down. Um, it makes a good gift. You know, it was just something, a fun, a fun project. That yeah. was it. Is there like- And you can find uh, it on Amazon for like seven bucks in any yes. country. Yes, yes, in any country, sure. Is there one- that you would say is like your favorite were maybe something that I people have asked me. Yeah. <laughs> so I went ahead and I found five. They're all really short. Is that okay? okay? Yeah, sure. Um, the first one is laughter is our hearts farting. The joy is inside and it has to come out. <laughs> um, the second one is um, try eating breakfast in the bath or listening to Christmas music in June. Sometimes it's good to make your own traditions. <laughs> um, and, and I do both of those things. I eat breakfast in the bath and I listen to Christmas music in June. And people think I'm crazy, <laughs> but it's my tradition. Okay. <laughs> um, another one, uh, this is a little more philosophical sometimes. Emotion is the ice in the drink of logic. It makes it taste better at first, but, it mel- but as it melts, it dilutes the drink. Be careful not to use too much. So I think I'm, I'm a big fan of logic. Um, mm-hmm. And emotion is like the ice in the drink of logic. Mm-hmm. Because emotion is great to add to logic. But as it melts, it dilutes the logic. So don't use too much emotion with your logic. You know, try to make sure your logic is pretty clean. Mm-hmm. I'm, a big, I'm a big Spock fan. I agree. I agree with that. Oh, great. Uh, one, two more here. Unreal expectations can be like saying a dog that can't fly is a failure as a bird. <laughs> so I think sometimes people have very high expectations yeah. and then they're often very disappointed. And it's like, no, your expectations are just too high. Just relax yeah, you know, yeah, take yeah. life as it comes. It, it'll work out, you know, just because a dog mm-hmm. can't fly. Don't say it's a bad bird. <laughs> and the last one I think is just a good basic rule of life. Always be humble, but always be in charge. And I, and, I, and I think that's a really hard one to do, but I really like that one because especially what I've learned about being in Japan where humility and, and modesty are very celebrated, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I really respect that. And I've learned how to be more humble and, and, uh, and it feels good. And, and it, I think it's, it, people should be as humble you know, and, and as they, as much as they can. Um, and even in my industry, you get a lot of people who are voice actors who get a bit full of themselves and they think they're special somehow, but you know, it's just a job like any other job. We're not so special. Um, and also it's important, but to also be in charge. You know, a lot of people think like humility is a weakness, Yeah. but it doesn't have to be, you know, you can still be humble, but still be in charge of the situation. And so, you know, it's a hard line to walk. It seems like a, a dichotomy or a, a opposition in a way that uh, you can't be humble and also in charge. But that's the challenge, you know. Yeah. And so that's what I try to do in my life is try to be humble. But still, you know, I'm in charge of my life. I'm not, I'm not you know, weak. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a very good, just simple short lesson. So a lot of the book is things like that. Just my little philosophies, my little observations, nothing too serious. And it's easy to pick up and put down. 
but it's called Ericisms. I don't really like I'm, the title, but that's what people <laughs> that's what people cu- kept calling them. They say, "Oh, that's a good Ericism. That's another Ericism." <laughs> and so I couldn't think of anything else to call it. So, it's it's a not a religion thing. or anything. It's not a political <laughs> <You know>. party. <laughs> <laughs> so no one's affiliated to Ericism. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no rallies at, yet. At least not yet. <laughs> not no rallies. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. But yeah, you say it's not really that deep, but there are deep thoughts in there, even if they're, uh, yeah, you know, if you, even if you, they're written in a in a light hearted way, but there there are some really deep thoughts there. So yeah, yeah, it'll make you think, but yeah, but not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ericisms available on on Amazon. So do Amazon check it out, around people. the world. It's just E R I C I S M S. Very good. Yeah. It's fun. Okay. Eric, I have one yes. last question for you. It, sure. It's been really, really fun to have you. Um, I always ask this question to my to my to all of my guests. There was something, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, blast processing. No. no. I, I'll explain. In the 90s, when the Sega Genesis, the console, came out uh, in the U.S., Uh, Sega of America came up with this uh, marketing gimmick to say that the Genesis had blast processing and it made it faster than the competition, more powerful Mm -hmm. than the competition, thanks to blast processing. Is it a real thing? Maybe not, but there was blast processing in the Genesis for some reason. So my question to you is, if you could add blast processing to anything in the world, so to make it to make anything in the world more powerful, faster, whatever, what would it be and why? <clears throat> Education systems. Because I think everything basically starts with education. And unfortunately, a lot of people in a lot of countries don't have access to education. And even if they do have access to education, they don't appreciate it. And so I think the more that we could expand and increase and improve uh, education systems around the world, I think the smarter people would be, uh, the, the, the more efficient things would run, the more logical things would be. And uh, I think we would just be a stronger species in, you know, global, globally. So mm-hmm. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. Yeah. And I just uh, got reminded by my, myself, actually, thank you, me. Uh, that I forgot about something and our listeners are just like, you didn't give Eric the seal. So you did so good in, in our uh, challenge that you get the official Sega Lounge seal of approval that I just sent to you. Uh, cool. Over, okay, so that that's for you. That's for you to keep your our seal of approval. You have it on, on Facebook there. So oh, I see it. The Sega Lounge <laughs> seal oh, 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 <laughs> of approval. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'll That's take it. it. Thank you. Thank what was you. my score? What, how many did I get correct? Uh, was it f- six? I think six. I didn't write six. Oh, better than half. I, I think uh, so. I bad. think so. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Again for your time. I I think everyone really uh, appreciated the the advice as well at the end and all the, your thoughts on on everything we talked about. All the best for your oh, future th- projects. Is th- is there anything? You would like to tell us, you'd, you'd like to, to, to say about current projects you're working on, people, things that people should um, look forward to? Or... I have current projects coming up, but I can't really speak about them. Mm-hmm. And um, so a lot of things in the, in the video game world are kind of hush-hush yeah. uh, until they're released. But um, happy to see the uh, Ultimate Showdown come out. Yep. And hope the people are enjoying playing that. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm staying busy. Lots of stuff with voice work. You know, it's it's TV, it's it's promotional videos, it's education, it's you know commercial animation. You kind of just do so many different things. So uh, and games are one of them. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to keep busy. You know, hopefully this whole uh, crazy COVID thing will come to a close by the end of the year but you know knock on wood and mm. uh so we'll see you has know, this affected your your normal. work in any way by the way yeah a bit you know because people are just kind of closed 
for a long, well, last year was basically closed, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of it. And so uh, studio work closed. Um, people stopped recording things. Um, my home office, my, I mean, my home studio has been busier. So I'm, I'm remote okay. recording things. Um, but I think just everything just kind of took a break in general. And the economy took a break. Mm -hmm. So people didn't, companies didn't have the money to spend on new projects. Um, but with things, you know, revving back up little by little, you know, it's, it's looking good. And, uh, but you know, these things happen as long as we're smart and we, uh, try to take care of each other and do our best and not be selfish about it. I think, uh, we'll survive. So yeah, Agreed. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year and to next year. Um, still a bit questioning the Tokyo Olympics, you know, and most people here don't <laughs> yeah. want them to have it. You know, I think it's like 80% now of people just say cancel it. But um, it seems like they're going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I hope people can be responsible and, and, and that will be successful. So yeah, we will see. Indeed. And for people wondering about Eric's projects, let's maybe keep an eye out for the, you know, new entries in the IMDb page, perhaps. Maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I have a, actually, I have a new Twitter page as well. So I'll, I'll put announcements on there probably first. And Excellent. my uh, Twitter account is just at Eric Kelso Voice. Okay. And as usual, all the links will be in the show notes. So do check them out. Check out Eric's profile. So Eric, again, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been a blast. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for your time. And stay yeah, safe out there. With you. Thank you. You too, man. Take care. And, uh, and thanks again for having me. I, I really had a good time. Really appreciate it. A big thank you to Eric Kelso for coming on the show. I had a great time and I hope everyone listening enjoyed our chat. Be sure to check out Eric's book, Ericisms. Before we end the show, a couple of reminders. First of all, our anniversary promotion is still going on the Sega Lounge store. So until the 20th of June, you can get 15% all lounge merch by using the promo code TSL7, the number 7, TSL7 at checkout. The SegaLounge.com slash store is the place to go for that code, TSL7. One last reminder is for you to check out our bonus episode, which dropped a few days ago, a review of Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World, the remake of the 1994 16-bit game Monster World 4. If you missed it, you can find it over at thesegalounge.com slash review or by searching your podcast app. And June 2021 is the month of Sonic's 30th anniversary, so the next couple of episodes will be dedicated to the Blue Blur. Next week, we'll have a couple of podcasters who focus on a very specific bit of Sonic media. And the week after will be our very special Sonic's 30th anniversary episode. So be sure to follow the Sega Lounge in your podcast app so you don't miss our upcoming shows. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a great week wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Above all, stay safe and have fun. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye The Sega Lounge. Hosted by me, KC, and part of Radio Sega's network of live shows and podcasts theme song and incidental music by OSC. Find them at opusciencecollective.bandcamp.com. Got any suggestions? Drop me an email to podcast at thesegalounge.com. Follow us on Twitter at thesegalounge and like us at facebook.com slash thesegalounge. You can find previous episodes of the show by going to thesegalounge.com and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Mixed on Productions podcast.